<laughs> and mm-hmm. it, it, it makes me think about a moment that I had on a previous podcast. I spoke to this guy, Rick Allen Ross, who mm-hmm. deprograms people from cults. Cool. And we, we spoke about Andrew Tate because this was around the time when the allegations were first coming out. And we spoke about him in terms of I, I was asking him, what do you think of Tate as a cult leader? Mm-hmm. And he s- thought that he possessed the potential to start a cult with how charismatic he was and his following. And I was more on the side of, oh, yeah, I don't really think he's a cult leader. I think, you know, it's kind of bullshit. But the hearing <laughs> the language that Tate has used these last few minutes where he's saying yeah. love is exercising authority I am in control I know what's best for everyone else strikes me as cultish and (laughs) not that far off from starting a group and you know he's such a he's such a a badass when it comes to the physicality of Mm-hmm. being a man like he could he could kick the shit out of other people and you know he's very charismatic and well spoken and then you know a lot of cult leaders you know don't possess those sorts of physical uh aspects in terms of like dominance and, and you know being able to yeah. be an amazing fighter a lot of times it's like all talk and you have to prey on the less vulner- vulnerable mm-hmm. but yeah, I don't know. It's it, it's when when he was saying that, it's it struck me as cultish, and and it just made me think about the conversation I had about cults, and now I see him as a little bit closer to a potential cult leader than I than I have in the past, based on those I mean, last few comments. It could be argued that his webcam business was cult light, right? Like, yeah. Uh. And he was just sort of exploring those dynamics. Um, also, my suspicion is that the people who are attracted to him on a personal level and who do see him in that sort of like father figure, but like in a weird way, my my guess would be they also have a father wound. Like, mm. that would explain the attraction, the draw to everything that he's saying, whether it's the guys who yeah. admire and look at look up at him or the women who gravitate towards him as well. It's like, what where for the women, I'm curious, like where have their fathers been? Have their, have their fathers also been absent in their lives? Were their fathers absent in their lives as children? Yeah. What dynamic then does that play? Because, one of the defensive mechanisms that we have as human beings is over-identifying with our wounds, similar to over-identifying with our defensive mechanisms. So if my father wasn't present in my life, then I might have abandonment issues and seek out a partner who will abandon me because it's familiar to me. Mm. And it's, it's easier for me to go after what is familiar, even though it might be painful, it actually plays out something that my nervous system is used to experiencing. That is more, yeah. that's actually less scary than encountering the unknown in a partner that's actually mm. going to show up and be present. Because I'm actually not used to people showing up or I'm not yeah. used to men being present in my life. So, yeah, like beings, showing up we are, is, we are something else. <laughs> yeah, like showing up is almost a threat to your preconceived right. reality. It's like, dude, stop like trying to hang out with me on the weekends. <laughs> like, what are you, gay? Like, get away right, from me. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Guys don't guys don't hang out more than 2 hours a month. That's that's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I I guess I don't even know this may just be a a crazy thought, but David Sutcliffe said something offhandish before where he goes in another time you might have been a Genghis Khan. You might you might have been a mm-hmm. a, a Genghis Khan figure. And I, I would love to see yeah, – there, there's no way to know what Genghis Khan's personality was like <laughs> outside of his, you know, accomplishments or conquering sure. from the history that was left behind. There's no there's no TikToks or podcasts of Genghis <laughs> Khan. I, I'm curious if 
these sorts of personalities the, the you know the once in a generational tate type personalities that have all of these things combining into one that becomes this global force is that just something that happens throughout human history and then that human form that was that was uh conceived with this personality just takes over whatever sort of control society is giving into as a mo- at the moment. So when Genghis Khan was born, that was land. Land was control. Mm. In order to conquer the world, you had to kill people and take over. And now it's attention. Now it's social media. Mm. And I wonder how close a Genghis Khan type personality. And, I, and I'm like putting aside the the murder and mm-hmm. the, yeah. the 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 sorts of. Um, you know, like the the more violent aspects. I'm I'm not saying Tate is synonymous synonymous with that. Like, if he were born uh, thousands of years ago, he would have, you know, killed millions of people. Yeah, I'm saying like if you met Genghis Khan in a bar today, and you also <laughs> met An- Andrew Tate, how similar would they be with women and friends mm. and their fought like the father of of Genghis Khan and. So, yeah, I, I I wonder if that's just something that happens throughout the folds of human history, that these once in a generation personalities are born. And then whatever is the 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 landscape of control, they just lock into that and they take it mm. over. Yeah, I'd be curious to know what, if any, are the similarities between how these two men were raised. That's what yeah. I'd be curious about. And there's this book called For Your Own Good. I may mention it in a previous episode written by a uh, child psychologist, Alice Miller, where she explores the childhoods and the upbringings of 20th century authoritarians. And she actually unpacks like how they were raised. What was, what was the relationship with their parents? A lot of verbal abuse, a lot of violence. And how did that manifest later on in what we now know as these historical figures. So yeah, super interesting stuff. Yeah.